After your name, followed by the pound sign. You will now. Reporting. My name is Victor, and uh, I'm working in the National Lab for Lab Testing and Remote Sensing. This morning, uh, we would like to present uh, an algorithm uh, the title uh, Interactive Algorithm to Lab Test Low Flow Rate from Lake Invest Low using both satellite and model data. So, okay, let's go to Lake Space. And the uh, objective is very straightforward to present uh, of this presentation to, is to present the algorithm to allow cash flow for weight from effect flow using both sub and model data. And the outline of, of my presentation is to uh, describe a little bit of background on the lake effect snow score. And, and here a methodology of this algorithm. Uh, we present some results and the very conclusion and future works. So, as from the previous presenter, uh, the, uh, sometimes the slow score can be quite very significant. And so, the impact of leg evac slow, uh, heavy leg evac slow band can pose a very significant weather hazard to the public, uh, causing airport shutdown and dangerous driving conditions. Like, for example, in this case, on the cell. 17, sorry, December 7th, and 10 uh, in London, so a very heavy snow, uh, over a meter snow in 24 hours. And snow, we mostly with miracle model, uh, in particular measure scale modeling. However, still like, uh, because like the snow bands can be very low, uh, kilometers, several kilometers. So, uh, uh, And microphysical property or, or, or uh, invest snow is not still well understood. In particular, the snow liquid waste. Snow. And we, very often we do loud casting of uh, lake invest snow using satellite radar and service observation. Satellite can help you to find the snow, snow band, body band, single band. How, like you can only uh, can only look at the cow top in the in those uh, given channel if, from from the coast east or west. Uh, very often it's overshooting the top, and because the snow band is very kilometer, two kilometers, and so uh, often the estimate the snow uh, amount and observation uh, have only limited observation, especially over like uh, Canada, they they uh, and a lot of service observation. Uh, real time estimation of the actual snowfall rate from lake uh, from snow uh, uh, the perfect of what is happening. The uh, interactive algorithm to allow cast snowfall rate from lake effect snow. So is the algorithm first takes a process input on snow location. Use both the satellite and model data to catch uh, snowfall waves along a uh, snow band. So a better now cast of uh, waves to help improve warning and alert the perfect. This is the side wheel of a snow band, and uh, you can see the all begin with a small uh, cumulus, and so as the uh, cumulus uh, move downstream. Cows uh, getting thicker and the top getting higher, and so the temperature will get cooler and cooler. Okay, what the satellite is telling is for, uh, of, uh, at the infrared chan uh, 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 channel and cow dot temperature. So the cow temperature change as the cumulus move downstream. So minus two, minus five, minus twelve, etc. So actually, what is Telling you actually the time evolution of the cup cooling. We can come to the cooling rate. Okay, 
So that is why a line of slope squawk uh, wielded from a satellite is actually a snapshot of the evolution of the cumulus from the initial to the mature stage. And dynamic forcing that generate a snow uh, effect snow score by the cut off cooling range, which impacts the ascent rate during the developing stage. Snow falling out of the snow score uh, is determined by air mass ascent rates, available moisture, liquid, uh, liquid ratio, thickness of cow, dry air entrainment, and possible factors. But in algorithm, we ignore the dry air entrainment and, and other uh, uh, effects. Methodology, uh, steps, uh, there's a couple of steps, five steps. The first and second step is uh, listed here. So the first step is uh, very simple. So we need the forecaster's uh, expert judgment to identify the snow squall. Okay? For example, in this just a, you can identify many snow beds, but this, I only use five here for this case. Like, first look at the radar satellite and, and, and the boundary layer wind to identify the snow squall. Uh, in our workstation, the Lino, you, you can use map object or in the Aurora uh, 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 now casting system, you can always align. Where's my mouse? The uh, slow band and the left long location, a pair long location along the snow band. And this first, we will start that data at the in infrared channel and then the count of temperature as a function of distance. Well, on the right is the cow temperature change with distance. You can uh, this the uh, uh, this set is the cumulus developing uh, development stage. So the cumulus growth, the cow temperature is cooling and cooling, and has reached the bar. Uh, uh, you, uh, uh, so the the stop. Like for this case, of course, it's kind of noisy the data because it is a break in the power here. So this step, basically, we want to calculate the dtdx, that's the temperature gradient, along the developing section of the snow squall. OK, this is the line over here. So we're uh, moving average to get the average slope here, dtdx. For this case, my 2.26 degree per kilometer. This can later be converted into the cooling rate. And step three, so the model starting there, at different points of snow, along the snow squall, okay? Like here, for example, let's look at the blue line, just for example. So let the forecast draw a line along the band, get sounding data from the regional model at different points along the snow squall. So the, the purpose is first, to, we want to take, get, grab the modified air temperature parcel. Okay, to the equilibrium level. The equilibrium level is not, not the model of the model, but uh, we use the satellite uh, uh, device the temperature. Then we can calculate or we can grab the satellite, uh, sorry, the saturated lapse weight for the sounding data. Then we calculate cloud thickness, precipitation net quake, and binary ring, ring layer wind. Calculation of snow rate. First, we already know the temperature gradient dtdx from the step on the development step of the snow score. Calculate the count of cooling rate. Uh, uh, temperature with the boundary layer we, we use. And calculate the mean saturated adiabatic less rate with the boundary layer come from the sounding data, okay? So the is used to calculate the vertical velocity. So dt, dt, gamma, the uh oh And calculate condensed water from the that's equilibrium level to the, uh, from the L to the equilibrium level. At the vertical moisture first, at different points along the snow score. So this is simply Q times the vertical velocity. And we can create the snowfall weight at different points.
upon a large snow squall up the shoreline for this step, okay? That is low intensity, it's a vertical moisture flux times the snow liquid ratio. Uh, the snow wave along this green uh, boulder green here, all along the line at this stage, okay? Now, the snow to liquid wave so use this one to uh, this, uh, I don't want the time to be warm, uh, so, uh, so I so I use kind of I can use uh, uh, arbitrary level one to fifteen, and then something to do further work to have a better snow liquid ratio. But for use one to fifteen, but you all, always uh, uh, uh the, the final result using different snow liquid ratio. Weight modification, okay. That is so bad. Move in and you will modify because uh, the uh, you know, from the leg, uh, the, the moisture heat transfer from the leg. So we usually slow weight decrease as we move in and uh, so this uh, uh, graph here again. Again, the, the cow top temperature change at first distance. So it had the coastline over here, which is corresponding to the point O. So we already calculated at this point in uh, step four. Okay. Now, in that distance, we say any uh, uh, any and here, for example, this point X here. Okay. So point O, you already know the snow weight, which is this is O, and then temperature, these are O and LCL temperature, TL, okay? In any point X, in that, so we have the uh, snow weight SX, and the outer temperature TX, and the CL temperature uh, TLCL, okay? Now the weight at any point X in that, along the snow bed is Parameterized, okay. You cannot uh, uh, calculate this variable. It's a simple parameterization uh, method. So, uh, as the zero times this factor T L C L minus T X over the matrix of zero. What you can is that like the temperature when the snow is moving in and with the climate getting warmer, which means the snow wave will be diminished. Side, the color temperature getting cold means maybe you have other effect in place and the value will be higher. So, kind of prioritize this uh, to the snow wave uh, near the sun line. Okay. So, we this algorithm. First, I identify snow score. Input. We, oh, we, we, oh, what is the let on of the snow? Uh, 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 bed. We take in the satellite data, and uh, with a program to generate the cow top hour temperature along the slope band, and, uh, uh, and then we we get temperature at first distance, and then we can calculate the dt dx, the and uh, we use the data. We calculate the very all kinds of parameters, okay? But most important with the snow wave along the snow bed, so this can be tabular output or graphical output. So this is a part of the different leg effects snow cases. And, uh, December 7, 2010 and 1815. That is a case that uh, we have in London. We have uh, a lot of snow in London, the city uh, shut down. So the and uh, we identify uh, four. Uh, uh, of course, you can draw more, but I just use for the most uh, identify four and, and just try to test the algorithm. We on the then the blue line. The snow score. By the blue line, which uh, through two stations. The station one, 
Division WGD and then the London Station YU. Okay. That will show you the six hour four a month from eighteen to zero zero session. And that the coverage is done at eighteen set using the satellite data satellite data at eighteen fifteen set and so for a month is uh, from eighteen zero zero set. So uh, from the radar you can see that the heaviest snow is always along near the coast. Okay. And that the radar for this case uh, is underestimated the snowfall because uh, the Two to three meters per six hours, but of course for this case it is a lot heavier. And the left hand side, uh, this graph shows the uh, for uh, um, the result. Vertical axis is the snowfall rate. That's ten is the snowfall rate. Okay, seven meter per hour. Uh, this is the distance, and see that like for all snow bands. As four way increase with distance to the shoreline and then decrease square uh, in that in general. Okay. Also in the, the mean parts of weather velocity and the algorithm and for this case the this one knows. Uh um, the, the vertical speed uh uh ranging from point two one to point six meters second. Okay. I read a lot of literature and uh, from the they use uh, a lot of business signal modeling to model the lake effect snow. I compare the number, they're quite consistent. So, uh, and let's focus on the blue line here. The blue line, this one, okay. So the that's a slow uh, 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 pass through coast and northern. Okay, compare with the uh, observation and the observation for two hour period and closing the time the calculation uh, for this case 17 to 19 through because the snow wave can change uh, quite dramatically from hour to hour so two hours to compare so the, the like for this case is overestimate the snow wave at college okay Three centimeter at college, but all I have is uh, uh centimeter per hour. But for the amount rate um very straight from seventeen to nineteen to eighteen is one centimeter from eighteen to nineteen to six centimeter. So it's in the uh, the evidence calculation is within that we within that range and uh uh, again, I use snow bands and focusing uh, with the blue line again, which pass through WGD and YXU. And the the, the the below is the six snow four. Oh, this one. This, uh, I get confused. This is the next one. The case is on December eighth, two thousand ten, at twelve fifteen cent. So I draw four snow bands and and, and to test uh, the the test the algorithm. So the blue band, uh, pass through London, the one pass through WGD, and the six hours no fall for it is over And it's underestimate what's happening. And it's indicated in this graph here. You can see that. And there's no way for the wet blue band is really increasing very significantly with distance near and then. Decrease uh, moving inland. Let us wet night here, and first I, I kind of such the snow wave, but the off several times. Uh, and the college reporting, uh, in fact, very heavy snow uh, for for that hour. But many offs from each other, but from twelve to thirteen, they have nine cent, uh, approximately nine centimeter. So we're suggesting also very heavy snow, but the short. The slow way increasing is quite radical with distance, and, and moving inland it drops. And then, but artificial, because here this cloud top is a lot cooler, 
And probably we have some high cow moving through. This algorithm doesn't work when you have a high cow layer. So we, we, I haven't worked out work on, uh, on it yet. We need to use another method, just maybe just based on model, a uh, 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 equilibrium level, something like that. But I won't talk about this. But anyway, artificial. Otherwise, the uh, uh, London will be around three centimeters. Leave it to the like that. So, um, how much? I want to skip this one. Look at the other one here. And I four. I have a one, two, three, four, five snow band identified it. And in case uh, we have a very heavy snow band move right to London, as indicated from the radar imagery. You can see the again slow rate increase with distance and then uh, up to the solar line. And look at the pioneer past London, which was uh, at, at this time. And, uh, London is the snow is pretty consistent, from 12 4 centimeters, 12 to 13. Produce uh, less than three centimeters. So it is for this case is underestimate. Uh, this uh, this winter, uh, 2013 at 5:52. Again, uh, three slow bands. Like look at the high version uh, uh, model, the, the GNM model, and indicating uh, there's a band over here. Uh, the slow way is, is, is light. And on the left hand side here is the the, uh, the high version model, the the GNM uh, light 25 millibar vertical velocity, and a 1.3 meter per second. So, so this band corresponds to this here. This radar you can see that like 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 the mode they tell you something but sometimes they don't identify identify every band okay? and indicating this graph here and so the uh, the red and green which pass through the London and College and in general speaking the pretty consistent with observed the, the nice node they reported one centimeter less than one centimeter so with the, the model uh, uh, calculated vertical speed along this band here with my mean partial vertical velocity like for example for this here meter per second for the model correspond to the red line here it's a uh, 0.4 meters per second and uh, model suggests but I want this because I think the often Underestimate the intensity of the uh, big event flow squad. So, conclusion uh, uh, in the active algorithm to forecast input on snow bands location with certain data to produce a better outcast of snow weight from lake effect snow. The is uh, several snow squad events and produce some more testing uh, to be done. This some have improved warnings and the public are having a snow score. If you have rainbow put snow band locations. Experiment to find no band. The calculation and result. Okay. To include a more visible Slow liquid ratio scheme in algorithm. That's the, that's the hard part because the slow liquid ratio time. And high resolution model test is to use more observation for evaluation sessions. This is a reference question. Yeah, 
Douglas. I, I just wondered about the perils of trying to validate uh, a convective parameter with a point for with a point verification. Mm -hmm. Because you, you may be thinking that you're not getting good results, but let's say London had uh, you, your algorithm said hour, mm -hmm. and London only got two. But you know that could be a kilometer or two away. They could get seven centimeters. So yeah. I'm just you're, you're being harsh on yourself. Maybe the results would. But when you try to validate a point for, uh, by using a point forecast, it's always going to be uh, a problem. Yeah, but we don't have a level of observation, right? That's why I think like sometimes the forecast is very important to 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 identify the slope band. Sometimes I may not be joy correctly, maybe a little bit, a couple of a few kilometers away, and it'll be different. Okay, and so. This is Justin in uh, Gaylord, Michigan. It looks really promising for some of our offices um, that that deal with the effect that really don't have the radar coverage over you know, some of our forecast areas where where lake effect may be ongoing and and you know you have radar estimates there and and sometimes those radar estimates are you know they're just missing the lake effect altogether. You know, a good example for us here in Gaylord is Sault Ste. Marie, where on our things our radar doesn't see that that lake effect at all, and I think that. That could exist for quite a few offices around, and yep. you know, if if we could, you know, do something along the lines of what you're what you're what you're looking at there, I think it would be a a better first guess sometimes than purely yeah. looking at you know uh, high resolution model data. Yeah, thank you.